made us. He's the one that makes things happen in our life. Every author has a copyright. Jesus has a copyright over our lives because he's an author of our lives. And if you don't want to approach the author of life, you will not be able to discover your purpose. Your purpose can be discovered. Today's message is titled Moving in the Power of Agreement. God just wants everybody to move in the power of agreement. Whatsoever we are doing, we need to do it with the spirit of agreement. Husband and wife need to agree together so that they can move the family forward. Our leaders have to agree together so that the country will not get stalked. If the house and the presidency or the house and the executive if they are now, if the Congress and Executive are not in agreement, you will see that everything will get stopped. It is so important that we need to stand in agreement in whatever we are doing, in anything that we are doing. And the devil understands this. And that's the reason why he wants us to be, a, he wants us to disagree so that we may not be able to stand. Our Lord Jesus Christ said in his word, and I understand that in Matthew chapter 12, in verse 25, a house divided against itself cannot stand. A house divided against itself cannot stand. If we divide against ourselves, we cannot stand. It is so important. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to dissolution. And in free city, a house divided against itself can, will not stand. We need to understand that if we have to stand, we need to stand in agreement. This, the first word that I read today about Genesis chapter 11, it was about people in the beginning who built the Tower of Babel. They determined to build a house, a tower, sorry. They determined to build a tower whose top shall be in the heavens. And they were doing it. And they were doing it. They are on that. They make the they, they work in agreement that no, we are not going to spread. Their agreement was against the program of God for them. Their agreement was against the purpose of God for them. The purpose of God was that the word will spread. The Bible made us understand in Genesis chapter 1, in verse 28. After God created the man, God created Adam in verse 27. In verse 28, the Bible says, And the Lord blessed them. And the Lord said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the whole earth and subdue it. Fill the whole earth and subdue it. But these people, they said, they are not going to, they're not going to spread. They don't want to spread. They want to be in a place against the program of God. But the Lord said that what they have determined to do, nothing shall be withheld. He said, let us go down and convince their language. Now, it took, an, it took agreement in heaven in order to destabilize the agreement that was on earth. Where if we can agree together, we can move the, the mountain. We can move mountains. If we can agree together, things can be better than this. That's why the devil is convincing us. The devil does not, even in the church, the devil does not want pastor and the congregation to stand in agreement. The, the devil does not want members to stand in agreement. Because he understands where we can go, what we can do, what we can attain, what we can achieve, what the goals that we can have, we can, we can, where we can reach to, or what, where we can get to if we can stand in agreement. And today, every spirit that doesn't stand in agreement, it is going to be banned today because you need to agree. In the, in the family, when the parents... When parents and children are not in agreement, we understand what it means. When father and son are not in agreement, when mother and daughters are not in agreement, we understand what it means. When husband and wife are not in agreement, we understand what it means. When there is no agreement, there is commotion. When there is no agreement, there is tendency to have uh, a lot of quarrel, uh, problem, trouble, fight. There will be, a, there will be, and there will be no peace. There won't be anything of, there will be no peace when there is no agreement. It is where the agreement is, that is where we can say that we are his peace here. 
There is peace here, there is peace there, there is peace because there is an agreement. You know that we, in, 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 in life, most of the things that are being achieved, most of the things that we are seeing today could be able to be seen because there was an agreement taking place in some areas. There was an agreement. If we do not agree together, we cannot go. Let me tell you something. For a pilot, a pilot might be an expert, might be a specialist, might be, be, might be, the, best, might be the best pilot in the whole world. But you still need a signal from the control tower. If the control tower does not give you a signal, it don't give you the sign, it don't say you should take off, if you go, that plane may get lost. It's to, every pilot needs that even when the, your, 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 your aircraft is piloting you, thank God we have people in the industry. Prince is an industry of, uh, of, uh, uh, of, uh, of aviation. It's an industry of aviation. So uh, you need to understand that. We need to understand that the control tower will give the pilot the signal in order to take off. So with me that there's an agreement. When there is no agreement, I want to tell you, where there is no agreement, there is commotion. Where there is no agreement, there is no peace. Where there is no agreement, there might be death there. These people, they agreed together to do what was even against the will of God. And the Lord said, we cannot stop them unless we also agree. So he took agreement in heaven in order to destroy the agreement that's, that was on earth. Let me say to you three important things that you have to agree with before we pray. Number one, you need to agree with your maker. You need to agree with your maker. You did not just, you did not just create, you did not just get yourself into this earth. You didn't just service from nowhere. Somebody made you. Somebody created you. You were created by God. I was created by God. The one that created me knew the reason why he created me. The one that created you, he has a purpose for your creation. He knows he know what he wants to do with your life. He knows the reason why he created you. He knows the reason why he has to do it. He knows the reason why he, he knows the purpose why he created you. He created you for a purpose. When Adam was to be created, Genesis 1 verse 26, the Bible says, God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the script, over the feast of the sea, over, this, over, the, over, the, over, over, over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. So God has a reason why he created us. When he was bringing something to existence, he said an angel, an angel went to the wife, the, the wife of Manoah, the mother of, of, of Samson. And the word of God made us understand in the book of Judges chapter 13, verse 4. Judges chapter 13, verse 5. In verse 5, he said, you shall conceive and you shall have a son. He shall be a Nazarite unto the Lord. No razor must touch his head. And he shall begin to deliver the children of Israel from the hands of the Philistine. That was the purpose. I'm sending something to this earth. I'm sending a prophet to this earth. And this prophet has a purpose. And the purpose was to deliver the children of Israel from the hands of Philistine. Everybody has his own purpose. Moses had a purpose why God created him. And the Lord made the purpose to be known to him. God made the purpose known to him when God called him. In Exodus chapter 3 and verse 10. God said, come now. I'm sending you to, to Pharaoh to deliver my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. That's the purpose. And that was the reason why I created you, so that you can take, deliver people from the house of bondage. I want to let you know, you have a purpose why God created you. And he who created you, he, can, he, who, <laughs> he who created us, can break us. He can do anything that he likes on us. God created you. So you must agree with your maker. You must agree with your maker. And whatever he tells you, if you want to know God, go into his word. God is in his word. God himself is his word. The word of God is himself is, the, is, is God. God is in his word. Psalm 119 verse 89. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is set in heaven. God has a purpose for your life. And that's why everything is in his word. In the book of, in the book of uh, the book, uh, when Jesus Christ was speaking um, to, the, to the Jews, I remember, God, Jesus Christ says something very important in John 8, verse 44. He said, whatever, he said, you are of your, if, if you are of your father, you're the devil. 
and the desire of your father you wish to do. And he said, he's a murderer from the beginning. So, anyone that is not in God is of, is of, the, of the devil. John chapter 8 verse 47. He said, whoever is of God, he hears God's word. Anyone that belongs to God hears God's word. He said, you don't want to hear the word of God because you are not of God. Some people, when they come to church, only what they want to listen to is music. They don't want to hear anything about the word. After the service, what did the preacher preach today? They cannot say it because their mind is not there. Anyone that is of God, he hears God's word. You need to agree with your maker. In everything, wherever he sends you is where you are going. Whatever he tells you to do is what you have to do. Power of agreement. Moving in the spirit of agreement. Moving in the power of agreement. When there's an agreement, how? wonders will happen miracles will happen if you can agree with god whatever god tells you not to do if you are not doing it if you do not do what god asks you not to do honestly speaking you get the result the word of god made us to understand in the book of psalm 107 psalm 107 verse 10 and 11 he said those who sat in the darkness and in the shadow of death bound in affliction and in high on he said because Verse 11 says, because they rebel against the word of God and despise the counsel of the Almighty. So no one can just be bound by the devil if such a person is in the Lord. And you have to agree with your maker. It's so important that you have to agree with your maker. There is no other God. There is only one God. In Isaiah 45 verse 6, Isaiah chapter 45 in verse 6, God said that they may know from the rising of the sun to his setting. That before me there is no other God. I am the Lord. There is no other one. He said, God has beside me, there is no other God. God is God. And He is God. And He's going to be God forever. In Isaiah chapter 42, in verse 8, He said, I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I will not give to another. You don't have two gods, just only one God. Isaiah 40, verse 18. Isaiah 40, verse 25. Isaiah 46, verse 5. He said, To whom shall you liken God? And who shall be compared with him? To whom shall you liken God? The God is incomparable. So this God, we have to serve that God. That's why Joshua 24, verse 15. He said, Choose for yourself whom you are going to serve. Either the God of the other side of the river where your father, your father served and died. Or the God of the Amorites whose land you heard dwelling now. But as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. We need to agree with our maker. Agree with God. In Exodus 20, in verse 2, that is the command number 1. Exodus 20, verse 2. He said, I'm the Lord your God. He said, that who brought you out of the house of, out of, out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, you shall have no other God before me. It's only God. The God of Israel is the God that we are going to serve. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Let us stand in agreement with God and enjoy the beauty of heaven. The grace of heaven. The glory of heaven. The wonders of heaven. We are missing out. I want to tell you. A lot of people are missing out because they don't agree with their maker. People are missing out. They are missing out because they don't agree with their maker. Jeremiah 17 in verse 13. Jeremiah 17 in verse 13. He said, Oh Lord God of Israel, he said, Those who forsake you shall be ashamed. And God came out and he spoke and said, He said, Those who depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Those who depart from God shall be written in the earth. That is, they will go down to the bottomless part of the earth. They will, whoever depart from God is going to hell. Let us agree with our maker. Wherever he sends us is where we're going to go. Whatever he tells us to do is what we are going to do. Whatever he asks us to do, that is, when, we, when God says this, we have, we, as an obedient servant, we, obedient child, we need to do what he asks us to do. Psalm 62 verse 11, he said, God has spoken once and twice I've heard this, that power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. When he speaks once, don't let God repeat his, himself. When he speaks once to us, let us agree with him. In the book of 1 uh, Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, he said, Behold, 
To obey is better than sacrifice. And to heed than fat of rams. We need to, un we need to obey his voice. Agree with your maker. Agree. Whatever, when he tells you to do this, do it. God is God. When you just agree with your maker. All your maker say, wait. When he tells you to wait, wait. It's an occasion we want to do some things. We want to do some things contrary to his will. Contrary to what he has told us. Because we are in haste. You shouldn't be in haste. When the Bible makes us understand in Romans chapter 10 verse 11. He said, for whoever believes in him shall not be put to shame. If you can believe in your God, you can trust this God, you will never be put to shame. Psalm 125 verse 1. Those who trust in the Lord are like Messiah, which cannot be moved but abides forever. Agree with God. Agree with your maker. Agree with him. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. And when you can agree with God, yet, yeah, I want to tell you, there is no limit to where you are going. When they said the sky is the limit, I want to tell you, sky is not the limit. Heaven is the limit. Because you will go beyond the sky. You will move beyond. You will abide. You will go beyond. You will ascend. You will ascend. You will accelerate. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Number two, you must agree with the spirit that the Lord has given unto you. Agree with the spirit. When God created us, he created us spirit, soul, and body. But the devil turned everything upside down. God created us spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, then body. That is how God created us. When you read 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23, he made us understand there. So, but sin turned us to body, soul, spirit. So, now, soul, that is where flesh and the spirit, where the battle. And that's why the Bible made us understand that to be carnally minded, to be carnally minded, Romans 8 verse 6, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So we have to allow the spirit, the spirit that God has given you, let the spirit, let the spirit agree with your spirit, agree with the spirit of God. The Bible said in Romans 8 verse 16, it said the spirit himself, be our witness with our spirit that we are, we are the children of God. We are the children of God. We are children of the Almighty. The Spirit bears with the Spirit Himself. That is the Holy Spirit Himself. Be as witness with the Spirit that has put in us that we are the children of God. We are the children of God. Agree with the Spirit. Don't allow flesh to use you. Flesh wants to do whatever pleases the, whatever pleases the body. Don't allow that one to use you. Agree. Agree with the spirit of God. Agree with the spirit that, has in, that God has deposited in you. There's what they call built in. Built in. Built in glory. Built in. There's a spirit when God created you. Created you. His spirit remains in you. His spirit is in you. His spirit is in you. That's why he said in the book of uh, Agai 2 verse 5. In Agai chapter 2 verse 5. He said, according to the word which I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. He said, my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. My spirit, my spirit, my spirit remain among you. Agree with the spirit. Let the spirit lead us. The spirit, the spirit, there is no error in the spirit. The spirit of God does not make an error. Let us agree with what the spirit says. Let us hear what the Spirit said and let us agree with the Spirit of the Lord. Let us agree with what the Spirit, agree with the Spirit. Agree with the Spirit. When you are being led by the Spirit of God, there is no trouble for us. In the book of Galatians chapter 5, in verse 16, he said, walk in the Spirit and you will, you, will not, you will not fulfill the work of the flesh. When we are being led by the Spirit, we need to be led by the, when we are led by the spirit we are empowered we are empowered to take what we are we have to take authority to take our position and that's why the word of god said it in Romans 8 in verse 14 he said for as many as been led by the spirit of god these are the sons and daughters of god a child cannot do anything but a son does a child cannot do anything but a son will say where is my father's property where is my father's house? Where is my father's house? Where is my father's property? A son we ask, but a child cannot do that. But when we are being led by the Spirit of the Lord, we become sons and daughters of God. 
Let us agree with the Spirit of God. Agree with the Spirit. Agree with the Spirit. Don't be led by, don't be led by the flesh. Jesus Christ said it seven times in the book of Revelation 2 and chapter 2 and chapter 3. He said, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. If you have the ear, he said in Revelation 2, verse 7, Revelation 2, verse, uh, verse 13, Revelation 2, verse 22, Revelation 2, verse 29, he said it. Revelation 3, he said it. In verse 6, he said it. Verse 13, he said it. And that is what the whole Almighty is telling you. And he's speaking to you that if you need to hear what the Spirit says. And what the Spirit says, let us agree with the Spirit of God. When the Spirit says this, you know, the times we just feel like this, oh, this is how we want it. But when the Spirit tells us something, let us agree with the Spirit of the law. Because there is no, there is no disappointment in the Spirit of God. There is no regret in the Spirit of God. The Word of God said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, He said, I have not seen, he has not heard, and has not come to anybody's mind what the Lord has prepared for those who love him. First time said, but these he has revealed to us through his spirit. For it is the spirit that searches all things. Yea, the deep things of God. If we want to walk in the power of God, if we want to do well, if we want to succeed in life, if we want to excel, if we want to fulfill our purpose, we must agree with his spirit. The spirit leads us. It is the spirit of God. When Apostle Paul was to go to Mysia, uh, the Holy Spirit said, Don't go. When he was to go to Asia, the Holy Spirit, don't go. When he was to go to three cities like that. But he said, At night, a man of Macedonia appeared in his dream. He said, Come to Macedonia and come and save us. And they went to Macedonia, they saved. There was a great crusade. And that was where the, the, the head shook, where the earthquake, they prayed to the extent there was an earthquake. Yes, earthquake. Earthquake took place and shook the foundation of the prison. Every satanic imprisonment in your life will be shaken in the name of Jesus Christ. Acts of Apostles 16, verse 25 and 26. The same thing that happened on that night that the foundation of prison was shaken. I convert it and I take it. I receive it. I lose it upon you. That every satanic imprisonment in your life is shaken off in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, you need to agree with the saints. God wants to agree with the saints. Agree with the brethren. We need to stand in agreement. We need to, why many people don't get things done is because they don't stand in agreement. This the Lord Jesus Christ now spoke to us in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 18. He said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Verse 19, I shall I say unto you, if two of you agree on anything, there are some things that you can achieve alone. But there are some things that you cannot do alone. Let me, people don't understand the meaning of purpose of life. The things of life is just like this. Let me use this example for you. My hand, I can use, I can take this microphone alone. I can hold, I can take this Bible. And even this speaker, I can hold it. Because it depends on the weight. It depends on the weight. Some of you, you are here for a great purpose. The purpose of God for your life is heavy. The purpose of God for your life is great. So therefore, you need someone to agree with so that you can be able to attain it. If I have to carry this, honestly speaking, I can't carry it alone. I cannot carry this pulpit alone. It's heavy. And where am I taking it to? It's not possible. I can't carry it alone. Even this side alone is heavy. So I can't carry it alone. So if your purpose is like this, you can't do it alone. And if you want to do it, then it takes a long time and you might not even be able to finish. Because what a man will do if he doesn't want any other person to support him is to do it a little bit. You move it like this. You move it bit by bit. But if two people have to carry this, one lift it here, one lift it there, they are taking, they are going. And there's something that even two cannot take. It depends on the kind of the glory that the Lord has set upon you. It depends on the kind of the purpose that the Lord has commissioned you to come and fulfill on earth. Have you ever seen only one builder that builds a house? 
Have you ever seen this building to say that only one person is going to take everything? Only one person will do the foundation. We put all the blocks and bricks and everything together. We put the roofing together. The electricity. Everyone has his own purpose to be. Even the one that fixed all those things, all this electricity, it did not do it alone. It's a teamwork. Husband and wife agree together. He's saying for the family to stand in agreement. Father is praying here. Mother is praying here. Children are praying there. No. Let's pray together. Let's uproot the kingdom of darkness. Let's stand against the power that is standing against the will of God for our lives. And church of God, the church of God has to take over. The church of God has to do the right thing. The church of God has to stand in agreement. We need to stand in agreement. We need to stand in agreement so that we can overthrow satanic kingdom. There are some things that one person cannot do. There are some things that is hard for one person to do. When you and I were in the college, we are in universities, we understand now we have group discussion, group chat, group discussion, group lecture. After the lecture time, we come together, two or four people can come together in the evening. When they come together, reason together, checking when we're going to sort out some past questions because we are moving to the next question. And those who do group discussion, they make it very well. Because that is where wisdom comes up. Why can't you do that? This is the answer. I have solution. I can do this. I can do that. No matter how busy you are, you and your husband or you and your wife, you must sit down together to plan things together. How, if God does not want you to plan together, there's no reason why God has to initiate your marriage. Anyone that said, I can't, I can't stand, I cannot agree with my wife, there's no reason why you have to get married. Many prayers are not answered because we have not done what God asked you to do. No! We need to stand together. We need to come together. We need to take things together. We need to agree together. We need to work things together. We need to make things to work. Made us is the one that makes things happen in our life. Every author has a copyright. Jesus has a copyright over our lives because he's an author of our lives. And if you don't want to approach the author of life, you will not be able to discover your purpose. Your purpose can be discovered.